This video provides a comprehensive understanding about insulin, its biosynthesis, biological functions, clinical significance, and the laboratory methods used to measure it. Insulin is a dipeptide protein hormone consisting of an A chain with 21 amino acids and a B chain with 30 amino acids held together by disulfide bonds. It's synthesized by the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, and the primary function is to regulate glucose concentration in the blood. Insulin was the first protein hormone to be sequenced, the first substance to be measured by radioimmunoassay, and the first compound to be produced by recombinant DNA technology for clinical use. As a result, the discovery of insulin is considered to have revolutionized clinical medicine. Insulin is coded by the insulin gene or INS gene located on the short arm of chromosome 11 at position 15.5. Insulin messenger RNA or mRNA is translated into a single chain precursor molecule called pre-proinsulin that consists of signal peptide, B chain, C peptide and A chain. As this molecule is moved across the endoplasmic reticulum, the signal peptide is cleaved by signal peptidase and the remaining chain is called proinsulin. Proinsulin has three domains consisting of an amino terminal B chain, a carboxyl terminal A chain and a connecting peptide in the middle known as the C peptide. The C peptide domain is excised by specific endopeptidases and packaged with insulin into secretory granules in the Golgi apparatus. These secretory granules are released in the bloodstream upon stimulation of the beta cells. Insulin secretion is thought to follow two mechanisms, tonic or basal secretion, which is modulated by the fluctuations in physiological levels of glucose in fasting state, and biphasic secretion, which is primarily in response to exogenous glucose stimulation of the beta cells. In response to hyperglycemia and other factors such as glucagon, amino acids and hormones including growth hormone and catecholamines, the pancreatic beta cells are stimulated which initiate the secretion of insulin. The mechanism involves uptake of glucose by the beta cells via glucose transporter 2 or GLAT2 where glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate resulting in the generation of ATP. This leads to the closure of ATP-sensitive potassium channels that are open under non-stimulated conditions to maintain the resting membrane potential. However, upon closure of these channels, the decreased outwardly potassium current and the opening of the voltage-dependent calcium channels elicit depolarization of the membrane. The subsequent increased intracellular calcium triggers the fusion of insulin-containing granules with the cell membrane and thus the release of insulin and C-peptide into the blood. It's important to note that C-peptide is secreted in equimolar concentration with insulin from the beta cells. This is useful to evaluate endogenous from exogenous insulin in the blood. We will cover C-peptide in detail in a separate video. The main function of insulin is to metabolize carbohydrates, specifically to regulate the concentration of glucose in the blood. This is achieved primarily by the interaction of insulin with its receptors in the liver, skeletal muscles, and adipose tissues. In the liver, insulin reduces hepatic glucose production by decreasing gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, free fatty acid oxidation, and ketone production. It also promotes the uptake and utilization of glucose by increasing the expression of glucose transporters and activating glycolytic enzymes, as well as promoting glycogen synthesis to store the excess glucose. Additionally, when liver is saturated with glycogen, insulin promotes the conversion of excess glucose into fatty acids that are then exported from the liver as lipoproteins. This increases the very low density lipoprotein in the blood, which results in the formation and accumulation of triglycerides in adipose tissues. In the skeletal muscle, insulin facilitates the uptake and utilization of glucose by the myocytes for immediate use and promotes glycogen synthesis to store the excess glucose. Insulin is an anabolic hormone and as such, it also increases protein synthesis by promoting the uptake of amino acids. In adipose tissue, 
Insulin facilitates the uptake of glucose by adipocytes to synthesize glycerol, which is then used to join with free fatty acids produced by the liver to form triglycerides. These triglycerides accumulate in the adipocytes and thus increase lipogenesis. In addition, insulin inhibits the breakdown of fatty acids in adipose tissue and instructs the body to use carbohydrates as energy source instead of fat. In summary, insulin facilitates the uptake and utilization of glucose by the body and storage of excess glucose in the form of glycogen in the liver and skeletal muscle. It also indirectly increases the formation and accumulation of triglycerides in adipose tissue. As a result, carbohydrate is used as the primary source of energy instead of fats, leading to increased fat accumulation in the body. Measurement of insulin is indicated in the diagnosis and differentiation of hypoglycemia, in the homeostasis model assessment for quantifying insulin resistance and better cell function, in determination of insulin sensitivity with the hyperinsulinemic clamp, and investigation of diabetes and other metabolic conditions. Increased level of insulin may be seen in insulin resistance, which will be covered in depth in a separate video, type 2 diabetes, obesity, Cushing syndrome, oral contraceptives, acromegaly, insulinoma, and hyperthyroidism. Decreased level of insulin may be seen in overt diabetes mellitus and disorders of catecholamines. Pre-analytical factors such as fasting, transport conditions, specimen handling, and hemolysis should be considered as they impact the insulin result. Grossly hemolyzed samples should not be used as enzymes released from the red blood cells degrade insulin in the sample. Autopsy or post-mortem specimen must not be used due to variations because of putrefaction, hemolysis, and clotting. The analytical methods for determination of insulin concentration can be divided into three categories, and they include immunoassays, chromatography methods in conjunction with mass spectrometry, and electrochemical biosensor methods. Immunoassays are a group of analytical techniques that are based on the selective binding between immunoglobulins or antibodies and antigens to measure the concentration of analyte in the sample. The analyte of interest is the antigen to which the specific antibody used in the assay binds. There are two types of antibodies that are used in immunoassays. They are monoclonal antibodies that have affinity to a specific antigen epitope and polyclonal antibodies that have affinity to multiple epitopes on an antigen. There are several types of immunoassays which can be classified into two main categories, competitive and non-competitive immunoassays. In competitive immunoassay, a known amount of labeled antigen is added to the assay to compete for limited binding sites and the signal produced from antibody-antigen conjugation is inversely proportional to the concentration of the analyte present in the sample. In contrast, the only antigens present in non-competitive immunoassay is from the sample and thus the signal produced is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte present in the sample. Let's now go through the principles of some of these assays. Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA, is used to detect whether a target antigen is present in the sample. It can be used in different formats, such as direct, indirect, competitive, and sandwich methods. Sandwich type ELISA is the most popular for insulin determination, which involves the use of a capture anti-insulin antibody immobilized on the plate and labeled detector anti-insulin antibody such as peroxidase label. The antigen, in this case insulin, reacts with the capture and detector antibodies followed by washing the unbound antibodies and addition of a chromogenic substrate to react with the antibody antigen complex. The reaction is stopped by adding acid and the colored products are then measured using a spectrophotometer. The measured signal correlates to the insulin concentration in the sample. Alpha Lysa or amplified luminescent proximity homogeneous assay which involves the use of donor beads that are coated with streptavidin and conjugated acceptor beads with anti-insulin antibodies. The reagent also has another set of biotinylated anti-insulin antibodies and the assay does not require washing. 
The biotinylated anti-insulin antibodies bind to the streptavidin coated donor beads and in the presence of insulin molecule in the sample, the donor beads and the acceptor beads are brought into proximity as both biotinylated donor bead bound anti-insulin antibodies and acceptor bead conjugated anti-insulin antibodies bind to the insulin molecule. When laser excited, the donor beads convert ambient oxygen into singlet oxygen which reacts with the acceptor beads and cause a luminescent response that's then measured. The signal generated is proportional to the concentration of insulin in the sample. Homogeneous time resolved fluorescence or HTRF uses two specific fluorescent dyes which are coupled with donor and acceptor anti-insulin antibodies and emit specific fluorescence when they come close to each other. In the presence of insulin molecule in the sample, the donor and acceptor anti-insulin antibodies bind to insulin and thus bring the two fluorescent dyes close to each other. When excited by light, the donor dye emits a fluorescent signal which is transferred to the acceptor dye and causes a specific acceptor fluorescent signal. This signal is measured and is proportional to the insulin concentration present in the sample. Chemiluminescence immunoassay involves the use of beads or plates coated with a specific primary antibody which will bind to the antigen, in this case insulin, present in the sample. A secondary detector antibody that is labeled with an enzyme is added which will bind to the antigen and form a sandwich antigen antibody complex. A luminal substrate is then added to facilitate a chemical reaction and cause the substrate to emit a fluorescent light which is measured. The measured emitted light is proportional to the concentration of insulin present in the sample. Radio immunoassay involves the use of radioactive labeled antigens bound to specific antibodies in the reagent. When the unlabeled labeled antigens from the sample, in this case insulin is added, the insulin competes with the radioactive labeled antigens to bind to the anti-insulin antibodies and replace the bound labeled antigens. The replaced unbound radioactive labeled antigens decrease the radioactivity of the antigen antibody complex which is measured and the radioactivity is therefore inversely proportional to the amount of insulin present in the sample. On-chip immunoassay is a microfluidic device which is recently developed and combines both immunoassay and enzymatic techniques for simultaneous measurement of glucose and insulin. There are different types of detection techniques such as optical, electrochemical, mechanical and magnetic methods that can be used in the microfluidic device. The principle involves binding of labeled anti-insulin antibodies with insulin from the sample and reaction of glucose dehydrogenase with glucose from the sample in the presence of NAD plus as a cofactor. It then goes through an electrophoretic step where antibody antigen complex, unbound antibodies and the produced NADH are separated. Alkaline phosphatase is then used to react with its chromogenic substrate P-nitrophenyl phosphate and the final products P-nitrophenyl and NADH are measured amperimetrically which are proportional to the amount of insulin and glucose present in the sample respectively. Immunoassays are widely used with most available to be run on automated platforms. However, immunoassays suffer from interferences such as heterophile antibodies and cross-reactivity of exogenous insulin analogs. Other methods such as high-performance liquid chromatography with ultraviolet detector, electrophoresis and mass spectrometry techniques offer superior specificity, sensitivity and accuracy for the determination of insulin and its analogs. However, these methods are time-consuming as they involve lengthy manual procedures procedures and thus have longer turnaround time, which make them unsuitable for high throughput laboratories. As a result, the principles for these methods will be covered in a separate video. That's it for this video. If you've gained any value from this video, consider subscribing to the channel, comment for constructive discussion and share with your friends who might benefit from the content. Thank you.